Over 460,000 college students compete in sports across the country each year. These athletes compete in 24 sports, including football, basketball, soccer, lacrosse, swimming, gymnastics, hockey, and more. The National Collegiate Athletics Association, or NCAA, which sets the rules and regulations for college sports, prohibits any college athletes from receiving any payments of any form. This includes sponsorships, benefits, or even getting paid for their own autograph. Supporters of these NCAA regulations say that the thousands of dollars that athletes receive in scholarships to pay for their education should be enough payment. They also argue that college athletes should be referred to as student athletes, with an emphasis on student before athlete, because their studies should be their focus before sports. The truth is, these college athletes deserve to be paid for their hard work. A Business Insider study found that many college athletes dedicate more than 40 hours per week to their sports. These 40 hours per week include practices, team meetings, team workout sessions, studying film, and many other various mandatory team activities. That's the equivalent of balancing a full-time job and a college education, but not getting paid for the job. Now, NCAA regulations state that college athletes can only dedicate 20 hours per week to their sports. However, this does not include optional student-led activities. So coaches will delegate certain responsibilities to the team captain to lead certain team meetings. That way the team is able to put in the amount of work needed to succeed. But since the coach is not present, it's not an official team meeting and therefore does not count towards the NCAA regulated 20 hours per week. So essentially, the NCAA regulation on weekly practice hours is pointless because there is no means of enforcing it and it is regularly broken. If students were paid, the NCAA could only allow the students to be paid for 20 hours each week, which would create a distinct difference between mandatory team activities and student-led activities. The non-team activities would truly be voluntary and optional because the students would not be doing it for pay. Students working for nothing would be okay if it was all for charity work, but the college sports industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. In 2012, the NCAA reported over $870 million in revenues not including individual colleges. In 2008, 50 schools reported making a revenue of over $50 million each. The top 10 schools with the highest revenue alone easily break $1 billion. A survey conducted at the University of Texas at El Paso found that 54% of participants felt that an industry this large should pay its athletes. And these billions of dollars in revenue aren't going to charity, nor are they just going back to the university like many people believe. They're going towards things like paying coaches. Yes, the same coaches that spend less time at team events because the NCAA regulates that. And these coaches are getting paid millions. Some making well over $7 million per year. On top of that, millions of dollars are spent each year on marketing and recruiting, just seeking more profits and more success for the future. Based on these facts, it is clear that the focus of college sports is making money, just like any other business. But unlike most other for-profit businesses, this business doesn't have to pay its employees. However, the NCAA is quick to remind us of their main defense claim, and that's that these are not employees, but student-athletes. And the only reason the term student-athlete is such an effective defense is because the NCAA itself made up the term, with the singular purpose of it being their main defense claim. This term that is thrown around like a legal term was made up by the NCAA solely to protect the NCAA. You see, they were forced to coin the term student-athlete because a court of law in Utah determined that college athletes are employees and should be treated as such. In order to determine if they are student-athletes in the way the NCAA uses the term, one must look into the premise of the term itself. That premise being that school comes first before sport. In 2014, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill was sued by football alumni Michael McAdoo. He claimed he did not receive the education the university promised him. Going into college, McAdoo decided he wanted to major in criminal justice. He was told he could not and that athletes can only major in communications, exercise sports, or African American studies. According to the university, athletes could not major in anything else because other degrees could not accommodate practice and game schedules. Furthermore, he was enrolled in paper classes, which are classes that don't meet all semester and only require one final paper. 
This allows the athletes to officially be taking enough credit hours while keeping their GPA up to be eligible, but it also allows them to have the time for sports and not have classes get in the way. Supporters of the regulations claim that the thousands of dollars in scholarships that athletes receive should be enough pay. But is a $50,000 scholarship actually worth $50,000 when it's only paying for meaningless education composed of fake classes? And can we really refer to them as student athletes if saying school comes first means the university tells athletes what majors can accommodate their sports schedule and then the athletes are forced into paper classes so their class schedule does not get in the way of them focusing on sports? No. The fact of the matter is, these athletes work hard to make colleges billions. And these colleges continue to use them, hiding behind fake names like student athlete to increase their profits so they don't have to pay these athletes. And the focus isn't school. The focus is money. Money for the university, money for the coaches, and money for the NCAA who continue using these young adults and their talents to make profit. So let's stop believing in this fantasy that we live in a perfect world where our priority is the education of our youth and accept that college sports is a money business. Nobody should work as hard as these men and women do 40 hours a week and not get paid. They've worked for it, they've earned it, so let's pay our college athletes.